Hey there riders, Motogeno Chris here and Suzuki have announced updates to their GSX S1000 model for 2021, starting with a fairly big styling overhaul for a more futuristic overall look, alongside some more technical and quality of life changes. As tends to be the case, anything not already Euro 5 is becoming so with any model update and that is certainly true here, with the 2021 Suzuki GSX-S 1000 doing so with engine updates and a new exhaust system with more catalytic converters. Suzuki do promise the bike retains the old model's intake growl and resonance regardless. Naturally, the first question in most people's minds is how that will affect performance, and while there's some small changes, there's no big drop, which makes sense as these are tuned for more torque than outright power. The 150 horsepower figure adds two additional ponies now, however it also peaks at 11,000 RPM, which is 1,000 RPM higher. While torque is down 2 Nm and peaks at 9,250 RPM, 250 RPM lower. Suzuki also reckon they've shaved some time off the 0 to 200 and 0 to 400 meter times, while the big mid-range dips in the torque have been evened out quite a bit for a more even overall torque curve. Personally, I'd have said the GSX S1000 has plenty of power from that first edition released in 2015, and if anything, it was more the throttle response that could have benefited most from some refining, with the first gen machines having quite the reputation for throttle snatch at inopportune times, like around tight roundabouts. That was addressed to some extent with some tweaks to the ECU tune, but was one of my few criticisms of a great machine, especially when you consider the price, although we'll have to wait and see where the updated version lands in that regard. Fueling will no doubt be different on the new GSX-S, with Suzuki running a smaller 40mm throttle body instead of the previous larger 44mm, claiming it'll offer better control especially on hard throttle openings while also being electronically controlled, while the airbox is also updated to reduce air intake resistance. A new camshaft also revises lift and reduces valve lift overlap, helping keep those emissions down while a new slip and assist clutch is fitted. Suzuki promise a new ride mode system, however that's still offering three modes as on the previous model, with softer throttle response and torque through the modes, but the same peak power overall. Also updated is the Suzuki traction control system with five modes plus off, while a directional quick shifter will also be standard fitment. The most obvious outward change is that styling, with the bike a lot more angular, with a stacked LED headlight particularly helping thin down the front of the bike, while flowing lines have been replaced by a more Street Fighter themed look, to my eye at least. That does seem to make the bike a bit busier, especially around the tank and radiator panels, but the integration is good if you ask me. New turn signals also make up part of the package, as does an updated LCD dash with full LED lighting now as a result. Apart from this, you're getting a new set of 23mm handlebars, which combined with an updated seat are meant to balance an upright seating position with the demands of sport riding, according to Suzuki. The bars themselves move 20 mils closer to the rider, making for a more upright seating position overall, but also a wider stance. Plus, that snazzy new tank increases capacity to 19 litres, and Dunlop Sportmax Road Sport 2 tyres will be standard fitment. What hasn't changed on the new GSX S1000 is the chassis, continuing with the twin spar aluminium frame and aluminium alloy swing arm. KYB provides the forks with rebound compression and preload adjustability, and they are 43mm units. Rear suspension just offers rebound and preload adjustment in comparison. Brembo 4 piston monoblock calipers are no modern day Stylema units, however they are still a strong choice with three 10mm floating rotors, and ABS is of course standard fitment. Plus, you can buy those Brembo calipers as a coloured accessory if you want to really bling up the bike, alongside items like billet adjustable levers or lever protectors, a comfort seat, pillion cowl, and frame or axle sliders, plus some really tasty carbon engine covers. The 2021 GSX S1000 will come in the traditional metallic Triton blue, glass matte mechanical grey, and glass sparkle black, with the blue the most traditionally Suzuki of those options of course. Seat height remains at 810mm, but we do see weight increase to 214kg at the kerb, where it was 210kg previously, although the larger fuel capacity no 
checked out adds to that figure, as does the additional cats in the exhaust. So overall, that's a pretty decent update to the GSXS, with a big revision in the styling which may be quite polarizing for some riders if you don't like that futuristic look, plus some slight tweaks to the ergos, and the updates to the engine for Euro 5 with some electronic advantages there as well as things get a little bit more refined. Personally, I'm a bit more of a fan of the GSX-S750 as I like the slightly smaller capacity machines, but the GSX-S is a cool offering from Suzuki and one that hasn't yet risen up into that 20k plus price range, here in Australia that is, that is becoming increasingly common. To me, that's a real strength. Not everyone wants to spend that much on a bike with performance strong enough to keep most happy and a good level of overall specification. In fact, when these first came out, I used to see so many of them on the road, especially during the daily commute. They were a really popular bike here in Sydney. So what are your thoughts on the updated GSX-S1000? Is this a welcome update or would you have liked to have seen more done? And where do you sit on that new styling? Let me know in the comments. As always, stay safe out there and thanks for watching.